It was the April of 2020. I laid in my bed, sweltering, suffocated by the uncaring darkness of my room. The only sound that perpetuated throughout the night was the sound of my regretful sobbing. I, fe I felt nothing but regret because that night I had to finally bite the bullet and glance upon a side of myself that I felt was so sick, violent, twisted. That fact was that I was undoubtedly queer. It haunted me. I grew incredibly fearful of the way my heart inclined and in the desperation to hide away my emotions, I, I decided to resort to substance, apathy, and brutal, ma and, brutal, and brutal masochism. Suffice to say, I was left as nothing more than a glorified husk. And this lasted about two and a half years. Two and a half years where I grew incredibly fearful of who I was. Two and a half years where I damaged myself beyond repair. Two and a half years where I lost sight of who I was and what I stood for. I became incredibly scared of the very concept of living because I felt that I, was, I did not deserve that, uh, deserve that gift. Living was something for people that were, that were right by nature and I felt that I had sinned from the very moment I had been born. But I came around. I reluctantly reached out to the hands that, the hands that wanted to help me. And I, and I finally decided to set myself on the path to, on the rightful path. But now I stand here on the stage with this spotlight on me. And I look back on where, where I, what I have done and where I have been. And I see, and all I see is that the people that I had cared about the most are still stuck there in that brutal cycle that I was, that I was once stuck in. It probably comes to no surprise, but being queer means that we are basically living on a lifeline. People have to tolerate us. Okay? And it's just through that sheer tolerance, uh, tolerance, it's this gift that society has given us that even lets us step foot outside our homes. And this, this is the result of it. That graph over there shows trans suicide rates. And you can see that it's almost double, than the, double of that than normal people. Isn't that something to think about? That every day I have to wake up and flip a coin and wonder, am I going to live, make it to the night? And the world is just like this. I mean, I had to make that realization at some point and I had to power through it. But it doesn't help living in a world where our world leaders themselves find it scornful finds nothing but scorn for the fact that we just exist. A great example of this is that in the US, during June, surprisingly during Pride Month, of all months of the year, state houses across the country got in an influx of over 500 plus bills of anti-queer legislation. 500 plus. That's more than almost any other type of bill passed during that entire session. These bills caused the human rights campaign to announce a red alert for all queer people living and visiting the US for the first time in over 40 years. The last time being the AIDS pandemic. And these bills these bills reduced us to nothing but monsters, abominations to society. As it involved things like the mandatory harassment of trans youth in schools. 
and the ability of a, uh, of a the ability of a service to deny its services to it uh, to its customers on the basis of them not conforming to your uh, conceptions of race, gender, and sexuality. These things are just clear cut xenophobia. Okay, these affect things. Even these affect even normal people, not only us, but it is continuously propagated as hate towards the queer population, and thus such bigotry is just seemingly passed. The same can be said for Italy, whose new openly right wing government has now orphaned every queer adopted child within the country. Thousands of children maybe millions, often because their parents couldn't help but love someone of the same gender. All those kids sent back into the system of which many of you must have heard multiple gruesome tales of. And we're just stepping stones in their, in their political agendas because whenever somebody seems to announce something like this, People get riled up and they go for it. They, are, they all love the fact that they, are, that they are oppressing another minority. But if I really must ask, if such, if countries that are under, under international spotlights, like the US and Italy, can make such decisions, what does that mean for the rest of the world? What example does that set? You know, in Asia, less than half of all Asian countries have homosexuality even legalized. And only four, four out of this great continent allow us to remain in legal union and much less give us the right, give us special protection because, uh, because of the hate we are surrounded by. And the actions that the people uh, that the people higher up continue uh, continuously on uh, undertake are echoed through within the halls of our digital spaces as one of our speakers previously said hate speech has just become commonplace upon the internet you've seen it i've seen it we've all really seen it it's not really that hard to go scrolling down into comment sections and seeing some of the worst slurs or sentences being used oh so casually, as if they hold no weight to the human psyche. And it's mad to think that such an agenda is even possible by another human, because, you know, we've all preached love and acceptance. We all say, love your neighbor, love your neighbor like you love yourself. But when it comes to the practice of that, we don't hesitate to, ra to raise a sword at, the pers at somebody that's even slightly different. But I mean, you know all that. This is really no big news to any of you, I'm sure. It's another oppressed minority crying about being, an, uh, being oppressed. And it has been like this with other minorities for thousands of years. But is that really how you want things to stay? Is this really the kind of legacy we want to put forth as a civilization that maybe thousands of years later, our successors look back on us as nothing but Neanderthals for acting so grossly towards each other? Really ask yourself that. Is that really how you want to be viewed? Nothing less than a monkey. I must state that the moment you give somebody the acceptance and give them the right to humanity that they also deserve, it does a lot. My mother once told me that, I would, that she would rather see me love a thousand men, see me change my pronouns over a million times, than ever have to write my eulogy once. Because my be me being her child matters to her more 
than anything else I could do. And that meant something to me. It changed me. Because for the first time ever, I finally, th I, my thought process faltered. I no longer saw myself as hated. I no longer saw myself as a disgrace. I just saw myself as me. Another human being amongst a vast number of human beings. And I feel like that should be respected. Because at the end of the day, in this cold, harsh world of ours, the only thing we humans have is our humanity. And I feel like we should strive to uphold that. Because, our oath to, because the oath we undertake the mo from the moment we are born, that oath to betterment, it must be upheld. And in simple conclusion, I just hope that if you all take anything from this speech, it's that, I, it's that you, try, you try your level best to make sure this age of bigotry, hatred, and anxiety that we live in becomes a long forgotten memory and nothing but a sour footnote in the legacy of mankind. Thank you.